Hello and welcome back to The Listening Lounge. My name is Nick Day, CEO of JGA Recruitment Group, specialist payroll and HR recruiters. And right now there is so much noise on the internet. It can be really hard to be heard, but I want you all to sit back, relax, because today I am bringing you a fantastic guest. Someone whose content has been featured on the Oprah Winfrey show, it's been featured on CNN, the Today Show, the Good Morning Show. She's had her work publicized in a number of publications through the New York Times, uh, the Wall Street Journal, Cosmopolitan, Forbes, and more. She's an absolute expert on how to optimize your productivity and how to organize your time more effectively. Her name is Julie Morgenstern, and I cannot wait to welcome her to the Listening Lounge. Here we go. For over 30 years, Julie has been teaching people all around the globe at all stages of life about how they can help overcome their disorganization to achieve their goals. So I'm really excited about this conversation. It's certainly something that I could benefit from 100%. Now, as we watch companies transition back into the office in this new world of work post-pandemic, it's been a lot of new ways of working. Hiring managers and HR leaders are being forced to navigate new obstacles created by this pandemic. And it's there's a lot of things to consider from preventing employee burnout to finding new ways to re-engage workforces. I think Judy could give us a huge amount of insight in how we can manage our days and prioritization and our productivity more effectively as a result. I'm hoping today Judy can help us all to tame the chaos that's unfolding all around us in this new world of work. It's a delight to have you on the show. Oh, it's great to be here with you. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, my absolute pleasure. So I'd love to dive straight in if we can. I wondered if you could just tell us, just to contextualize your experience for the audience, a little bit about your journey that's led you to the podcast today. Because I understand from my research that you used to be a notoriously disorganized person living in a constant state of, of chaos, as you put it. You said that you are a classic right brain creative type, operating out of piles, spending your days searching for things, losing things. In fact, you even lost someone's car once. So have you gone from scrambling around forgetting things to becoming an organizing, uh, an organizing and productivity expert? Yeah, thank you for that. So uh, yes, I, I did grow up very right brain. Very, I still am very right brain and very creative. But when I was younger, I d could not organize my way out of a paper bag. I really like lived in piles. Uh, my parents, when I was younger, would ban me to my uh, bedroom once every three months and with the instructions on a Friday night that I couldn't come out until there was a clear path from the door to my bed. Wow. <laughs> so what happened for me was I, I really wanted to get organized. I really craved order, but I could not figure out how to do it no matter how hard I tried. Um, and then I had a baby and there was something about having a baby where I felt like Listen, I, as chaotic as I was, I always pulled things off at the last minute. I always got straight A's, like I, I always did it. But I thought I could not impose this form of chaos on a little baby, an innocent child. And I was very motivated to get organized. What I was afraid of, honestly, was that getting organized was gonna make me boring that I love the spontaneity. I love the like, you know, figuring things out on the fly. And I thought I, you know, if I get organized, I'm gonna be so structured and so predictable and it's gonna be so boring. And that was my resistance. But when you have a kid, I was like, this kid has to get to nursery school. She has to get to, I have to fill out the forms. I have to get her to the doctor. So I was willing to be boring to be a good parent. What ended up happening was I realized once I started to learn to get organized, it doesn't squelch your creativity, it fuels it. It gives you so much more time and energy and focus that's otherwise wasted in a panic or you know, looking for things. So my own epiphany of like, wow, you can be organized and creative was so profound to me that when I, my, I got divorced when my daughter was three and I couldn't really afford theater hours or money anymore. Um, so I thought I can help people get organized and I started the business and it instantly took off. And I think 
it's been so successful for so long because I really understand what it feels like to be chaotic and crave order. He wrote a whole book dedicated, another best-selling book on do not check your emails in the morning. So tell me a bit about the research behind behind that, that and why if we turn off from that habit, it can be so effective for yeah. our productivity. So never check email in the morning is, uh, you know, it's a strategy that um, and a technique that I have found really helps people shift from a totally reactive uh, mode to proactive, to feeling like they are in, being controlled by technology, to feeling like they are in control, back to in control. And, you know, the reality is, I mean, it, depending on your job, you may not be able to not check all morning, but your first start with your first hour of the day. There is nothing, even in a global workplace, your first hour of the morning should not be, let me see what's going on out there because it, it turns you like your brain into the, re the reactive mode. And then it's very hard to shut it down and then get proactive. Everybody wants, craves, this is a universal cry within the workplace. People don't have time to think. They feel they don't have time to think, to innovate, to strategize, to problem solve. Everything is very staccato, quick, 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 quick. They need time for legato work, right? Which is like an hour or two, sometimes three, of pure uninterrupted time to go deep on learning, thinking, process innovation, strategy, writing. And to, you should use the first hour of your, ideally the first hour of your workday for your highest impact legato work. If you reclaim your first working hour for that, first of all, an hour feels like two because it, your brain is fresh, you just go in, there's no distractions, you, and then you start your day with you in control, and you've done the proactive thing that's gonna reduce the number of fires, it's gonna solve big problems, it'll save time in the long run, it, it's so powerful. And then you can roll your shades up for business and find out what everybody needs. I'm definitely going to be adopting that. I'm going to give that a try from tomorrow onwards. I'll make that that step change from this podcast right here, right now. And hopefully the listeners will be doing the same. From tomorrow, first hour, no email checking. No email. We'll see how, how I feel. To help you with that habit change, decide what you're going to do instead. Because I have found in breaking the tether from email, the draw, that gravitational pull, it's much easier to combat the gravitational pull when you have something, a concrete alternative. If it's just don't check your email and find something else to do, you're like, nah, I'm just gonna check my email. <laughs> but, <laughs> but if it's, I'm going to like spend an hour, you know, doing the first draft of my blog or reading last year's, you know, board report to find out what our promises were, then it's, do I check my email? Or do I get that deliverable done? And it's much easier to combat uh, reactive with a concrete proactive task. Julie Morganston, it's been an absolute pleasure. I will, of course, put links to your web website, juliemorganston.com, juliemorganston.com forward slash books. Have a look at those titles, but I will put those in the episode notes as well. Um, are there any other links you'd like me to share while we have the opportunity? Yeah, I mean, I invite anybody listening who's interested, you can reach out to me, connect to me on LinkedIn, and I post on LinkedIn uh, uh, as well. So that's a great way to connect. Super, I'll put your LinkedIn profile on there as well. So please do reach through to LinkedIn on our episode notes. You can go straight through to there to Julie's profile. Thank you all for listening. I hope you've enjoyed this podcast as much as I have. I've got loads of takeaways. It starts tomorrow for me, the first hour. I am not checking my emails. Judy, thank you ever so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. It's been delightful. Thank you for joining me for the Listening Lounge. And remember, every good conversation starts with good listening. Till next time.